So let's go through some course overview and some tips. So just some structure of general maths. I think what's really important is that although this is now going into your second year of general maths um, in the new study design, most of you, are, I'm assuming a fair proportion of you probably have either older siblings or an older family friend or just an older friend who's given you some resources or your teacher's given out some older resources from students in the past. There are subtle changes to this study design and they have changed in the last 24 months, essentially. So last year was the first year, this year is our second year. Um, essentially what changed was we used to have these four modules. Now what happens is that we only have two modules. So you didn't do four modules, your school chose two of them. Now, essentially, VC or VCAR is choosing two for you. You don't get a choice. So you have four topics overall. Now, you have data analysis, which is the first one. It is worth double all of the other ones. So it is worth, think of it as worth 40% of the content. Each of the others is worth 20% of the content. All of that makes up to you 100%. So you've got data analysis first, which is easily your biggest. You've got finance, which is arguably the most difficult, um, and it'll be covered in the autumn lecture series. Then you've got matrices and you've got networks. Um, and these are really important that you understand that these are the four topics that you need to know. Now, also as an extra point to that is that there are subtle changes. They're very subtle. The subjects did not change drastically, but there are subtle changes to each subject. There are some things that were removed, some things that were added. So really important that you, if you are using older notes, you are prepared to understand that some of the stuff you will look at will be relevant. Some of the stuff you look at will not be relevant. Um, and then you have two exams for this. So really important, there are two exams. The two exams consist of a multiple choice exam and a short answer exam. Both go for an hour and a half. Um, the multiple choice is worth 40 marks, 40 multiple choice. Short answer is worth 60 marks. There is oh, X amount of questions. Um, it can vary, but it's worth 60 marks in total. Um, so you make up to 100 marks in total. Um, so also really important, the study design, it changed in 2023. So really important that you are on top of that and that you read through it and that you do utilize this um, new study design. It's really important that you have this study design somewhere on your computer um, so that you can access it and you can read through it when you need to and when you need to decipher what is relevant and what is not. Um, so a couple of things, what changed last year, just to, just to solidify what has changed. So there was no more modules choice, which we've already discussed. There was removal of non-causation effect and population statistics. So if you think, see things about population statistics and you're a bit confused what's going on, don't worry, that's been removed. Um, there was removal of simultaneous equations in matrices. Again, we're not going to cover that today, but that was a massive part of matrices. So you'll find whenever you do older exams and you do matrices that there is a, there's a fair amount of effort put into simultaneous equations and representation of linear lines. And you'll be like, oh, I have no idea what's going on. Don't worry, it's been removed, but it was super high yield content in the past. So it will commonly come up in old practice exams that you do. There was the addition of the Leslie matrix. So this sort of made up for what they removed from matrices. Um, the Leslie matrix, um, it'll be covered in a later lecture, um, but you won't find practice questions on it past last year. Um, and then there was a name change. Now there was a couple of little things added into data, but they were only very subtle or just changing of wording. And so therefore I haven't really put in this slide. We'll cover it today. So don't worry about that. Um, just a couple of other little tips. Your calculator, really, really important. Please get used to using the correct calculator. Please do not use the Casio or the TN Inspire. So your white Casio or your black TN Inspire in, no, sorry, please do use those. Sorry, other way around, I'm thinking about science. Please do get used to using those. Um, you don't have access to your little one. So I know a lot of you, which is why I get confused. I do apologize for that. You will find that sometimes in sciences, which is, um, I mainly do chemistry, that's why I was thinking that other way. You only use that little one. And a lot of people get really used to it. And that's just what they like to use. You don't get that in the exam. You only get your TN Inspire and you only get your CAS or your Casio um, class pad. Please get used to using it. Um, you get it in both exams, you get it in all SACs. It's really important that you understand how to utilize it because it's gonna be your savior at the end of the day. Um, you may not use it for every question. I hope you don't use it for every question, but there will be questions where it will be far more useful and it will save lots of time. It will be your best friend. Um, so always have some shortcuts 
um, on your menu screen if you can. If you can't, make sure you've got some little points in your um, in your summary book or your bound reference, whichever one you want to call. Um, please have some little menu sort of shortcuts in there because if you sort of get into the exam and you stumble and you might have a mind blank, you just want to have those shortcuts in there so that you know where you're going and what to do. It is your best friend. Um, also from there, um, I sort of preface this with a little bit of a, you know, asterisk. I do say complete all the textbooks exercises, um, even if your teacher says, you know, leave some behind. I preface this with a little asterisk. Do not do this as practice for an exam. This is the stuff that you do when you are learning the content. So as you go through, you're more than likely going to get questions from your teacher or you're going to get some textbook questions and they'll say, you know, do these ones. That's your homework. I need to see that to tick it off and say that you're going well. I would expect you to try and do all of it on the basis that when you are learning it, the more you do, the better. When you are doing practice for the exam, so at the end of the year and you're going for your exam and you're pushing through, please, please, please do not use uh, textbook questions. Why is that? Textbook questions are useless at the end of the year. So I'm going to get my little laser pointer out because I think it's going to be more useful. Um, textbook questions at the end of the year are useless. Why is that? Because textbook questions are broken into sections. So they're in sections. They are, it's a section on um, univariate data dot plots or bivariate data um, using your manipulation circle um, to linearize data. You know what the topic is. You don't have to read a question and then decipher what I need to do. That is a really important skill and that is one of the hardest things in the exam is reading a, a long question and deciphering what I actually have to do. You don't do that in a textbook. The textbook sections tell you what to do. As such, please do not do textbook questions as exam study, but whilst you're learning the topic, it's really useful because they sort of hone you in on every little variation that the questions can have. And then when you go and do practice sacks, you then sort of have to decipher when I need to use those little skills. Um, so great for that first grasping. Um, I always think as well that you need to review sections. So especially with data, data is worth so much, data, data, whichever one you want to say, it's worth so much and you do it at the start of the year. And then a lot of students just forget about it. So they move forward and they go, all right, I'll come back to that at the end of the year. And then they forget it all. Always review sections, especially if there's an area in data that you're really weak at and maybe you do the SAC and you struggle with it and you get the question wrong. Go back and review that section after the SAC. Go back and review it a couple of weeks after the SAC. Go and review it a couple of months after the SAC. Always keep on top of it. So always keep refreshing yourself on it. And don't be scared to cut things out of your textbooks. You don't need to sell at the end of the year. You know, oh, whoop de doo I'm going to miss out on my, my $20 or $30 from selling my textbook at the end of the year. Not a big deal. At the end of the day, if you want to cut things out of your textbook, feel free to do it. If not, you can also, you know, photocopy. You're welcome to do that. But it's a really useful thing to do and to put into your, your summary book or your bound reference. Um, you can also use sort of external ones as well. I do obviously suggest the ATAR notes. They're really, really good. And they're, they're produced by students. So the questions are aimed at you. They know how they ask the questions. So they ask you the questions in that sort of way. Sometimes textbooks don't do that. And that's why I suggest not using them for exam study. Um, and then summary book. Look, there are two sort of main ways you can do a study, uh, a summary book. I'm not going to go through it in super detail. But think of it as doing a really big summary book versus doing a really small summary book. Now, why I say there's maybe three is that you can sort of do a big summary book with a little summary book at the end. And what that means is you do your main summary book throughout the year. And then as you get close to the end of the year, you sort of summarize each topic in two pages, literally two pages. I'm not saying four, I'm not saying either side of it, like, you know, four, one, that side of the paper, that side, and then that side and that side. No, I'm saying a fold out, just those two pages. That is all you are going to summarize the entire topic in. So you're going to have four fold outs. You're going to have one for data, you're going to have the next one, you know, finance, you're going to have the next one, you're going to have um, matrices, you're going to have the next one, you have networks. Now, you might say to me, well, but data's worth double. Well, I actually think as much as it's worth double, you can actually summarize data pretty well. There's a lot of jargon in data that you can leave to your big summary book. But nonetheless, there are two ways of doing it. You can make a really, really big one. These can be a bit of a pain to look through in a SAC or exam, but they do have everything. And if you're someone who really needs that extra support in your SACs and your exams, feel free to make it as big as you want. Now, secondly, there's also the far smaller one. It's a couple of pages. Um, first, first of all, it says, you know, you can print it off from a summary sheet, you know, 
Try not to print something off. Please try and make one yourself. Yes, the positives are that it's a lot smaller and it's really quick and you can sort of go through it and you have some practice questions there. Um, it's also really important that to understand that it may not have everything if it's really small. And so therefore you may get to the exam and you may go, ooh, not really too sure what I'm, where to find that. I didn't put that in there because I wanted to keep it really summarized. So there are positives and negatives to it, but having a small one is not a bad thing. Sometimes people really like those smaller summaries and that's why you can sort of get the best of both worlds if you do that extra little bit. Um, but the golden rule is you need to create your own summary book. That's rule number one. You cannot get around that rule. You have to cover that rule. 